Hey guys, welcome back. Um, thanks for all the people who have actually um, messaged me on Instagram or commented below about, um, you know, this series. Um, it means a lot to know that I am actually being of some kind of help to you. That being said, today's video is about lesson planning. Uh, specifically, we're going to be lesson planning for middle and high school students. Um, today's video, I'm going to focus on middle school because high school lesson plans, at least for me, are a little bit different than they are for middle school. If you've seen one of my older videos, you might know that in middle school you will have a set textbook but in high school you may not and if you do have a textbook that the students work off of it, it off of, <laughs> and if you do have a textbook that the students work off of it's usually geared towards sunan testing and practice so um first off i have a whole list here <laughs> of that I'm gonna read off of to kind of keep myself organized so that this video isn't too long. So first things first, um, you look at the table of contents. So I feel like this is kind of in obvious but maybe not to everyone first step. So first we want to look at the table of contents. But if you look here, it will tell you everything that will be in the chapters, not just how many chapters there are, which is great. So when you look at the table of contents, the things you want to note are how many chapters or lessons are there in the book? What are the grammar and um, other types of pa and like sentence patterns that the students will be learning in each chapter? And then also, how is that specific grammar pattern or um, or sentence structure shown to the students? Like, what are the examples used? What is the context that the chapter is using to present this to the students? You want to note these three things because if your lesson is super far away from the um, from the book content and what they're learning in their classes when you're not there. And once you have identified these three things, you can start to kind of make a template for how you will teach. Now before I start my template, I do like to write everything down on the first I do like to write everything down on the first page and by everything I mean the lesson titles, um, how many students will be in the class if I know that information, um, what the co-teacher is like if I know that information, specifically pertaining to like in the class, not what their personality is like or anything like that. So their expectations of me, like if they expect me to be the fun teacher, if they expect me to um, hold speaking finals, or if they expect me to only do speaking and listening activities and never do writing and reading activities because some teachers will kind of take on the role of doing the reading and writing in their class and then you can do the speaking and listening portion. So. Now that you've looked at the table of contents and you have kind of outlined um, everything or typed up everything that you need to stay focused while lesson planning, now it's time to really brainstorm what you're going to be doing. So I'll take each notebook at a time and identify which um, grammar patterns I'm going to focus on for the semester. So one thing that I found challenging as a new teacher was I didn't know where my students' levels were, but also I wasn't sure of what they had been introduced to in their elementary school education. Um, and knowing that is actually really freaking important. <laughs> 
I think nobody tells you this, but that's really important information to know because then when you're looking at the middle school textbooks, you will be able to know what is review and what is new information. Uh, when I first got here, I took everything as being, this is new information. They have never seen this before in their lives. That is wrong. I know that now because I've taught a semester of elementary school and I've looked through and lesson planned for my elementary school for this coming semester. So now knowing that they already know um, simple past, simple present, simple future, the phrasing of want to. Now looking at the first two lessons in their textbook, I can see that the first two lessons are review. The third and fourth lessons are where they're going to start to learn more or newer information. Now before you start to go and get into your creative mind, although right now would be a perfect place for you to take a break and maybe think about some ideas that you might want to do throughout the semester, um, here is where you should probably think about assessments. Now this is again something you might want to add to the first page of your lesson plan to help keep you on track as you're making those plans. So first, you should think about short-term and long-term assessments. And trust me, when I first started, I really didn't want to do very much testing with my students, but if you want them to do well at the end of the semester, it's very important that you check in with the students by doing assessments. And an assessment could be something fun like a game, and you could just be really tuned into who's answering the questions, who's asking for help, who is giving help to others and explaining what's happening. The other thing you should probably think about is whether or not you want to do project-based learning. If you want to do project-based learning, this is a style of teaching where you set up your lesson plan such that at the end of the year, the students have a collected project that they can present. One recent example of a project-based learning activity that I did was we had the students learn about world cultures and countries and we had them choose a specific country that they would actually present to their classmates at the end of the semester. So as we taught the students various grammar patterns and vocabulary, they would always write an article using that pattern or that vocabulary and it would always be about the country they chose. Now they could change the country midway if they wanted to but they would then have to rewrite the articles that they already did so a lot of them didn't do that. You can also be more lenient and say yeah you can do up to three different countries. Um, but at the end of the semester, they ended up all making a magazine and they had an, they each had individual magazines that they then presented one article from in front of the class. Now, the other option, if you are in a situation similar to mine where you only see your students once a week, you could also choose to do the hardest grammar that is in their textbooks and focus on that during your class time. If you choose to do this, you should recognize that you will probably be the one to introduce the information to the students because you will be starting most likely ahead of where they are in the textbook. And it would be helpful to have the support of your co-teacher in this case, so you should probably tell them in advance if they end up not being super involved in your classroom um, that you need them to kind of explain this to the students. That way you can really get the ball rolling without it being too much of a for the student. Thanks so much for watching this video. Please Go to the description below if you are a teacher in Korea. Um, Core Share is one of the main ways that teachers in Korea share lesson plans and projects uh, with each other. And I just uploaded my first <laughs> lesson plan um, to the website. 
Um, and that one is actually the one that I used for my third year middle school students as well as some of my high school students and it is a murder mystery class so that is the one that I use specifically to teach my students a little bit more about passive voice and there is probably a few errors in it so I definitely try to you know um, look at it pre emptively and fix any mistakes that I might have made but that is there for you guys to look at um yeah and I'll see you guys in my next video bye she's a try to make you hesitate tell her at a party how you doing what's your name